The Twitter drama showing no signs of letting up now that Elon Musk is in charge. Bloomberg reporting that he's preparing for a round of job cuts while Musk denies he holds the role of CEO, tweeting the following. My title is Chief Twit right now. It's right there in the bio. No idea who the CEO is. Ed Ludlow back with us for more. Ed, walk us through where we are in this one. Yeah, well, good morning, Jonathan. I mean, headlines crossing the Bloomberg terminal for what it's worth that the two parties in the deal, Musk and Twitter, have asked the court to dismiss lawsuits on either side now that the deal is officially closed. I think the other PSA is that Twitter are offering to buy all of their outstanding bonds, right? That's the 3.875% senior note due 2027, the 5% senior note due 2030, and the offer price is 101% of the principal plus any accrued or unpaid interest. So that's kind of your PSA. You're right, we reported over the weekend that within Twitter, senior managers have been asked to draw up lists of those that they feel could be cut. And I guess, you know, the, the conversation's quickly turning to what the company looks like in the future. In, in many senses, Musk is looking to the past. We've had disclosures on Twitter that David Sachs, who Elon Musk knows from his days at PayPal, Jason Kalakinis, who is a, a, a well-known investor and a friend of Elon Musk, and also Sriram Krishnan, who's currently a general partner at Andreessen Horowitz, are all inside what is being billed the war room to kind of work out what this platform looks like going forward. It's all about, I guess, a plan to grow the user base that's never really breached 250 million, despite plans that have been in place for a decade to kind of get Twitter to a billion users as a base. Uh, what will they do to do that? We don't really know. There's been a lot of reporting and tweeting from those in this war room about the idea of charging for blue check verification. Uh, Jason Kalakanis, for example, tweeted out a poll asking how much would you be willing to pay to have a blue check mark verification. I think the overwhelming majority of respondents said that they would not be willing to pay anything. But that's where we're going. I think we're just waiting for some concrete confirmation of layoffs, any size or scope on that, um, and which teams are impacted. I'd sit tight because I want to get to Kaylee on a story about advertising, and I think this could become a bigger issue in the weeks to come. This was from GM going into the weekend, temp temporarily suspending their advertising on the platform. They said this, we're engaging with Twitter to understand the direction of the platform under their new ownership. As is normal course of business with a significant change in a media platform, we have temporarily paused or our paid advertising. Kelly, your thoughts on this one as it broke on Friday? It's an interesting one. GM essentially saying we're just going to sit back for a bit and see how things evolve, that they're still going to engage with customers on the platform. They're just not going to spend money advertising there. And there is a bit of a competition question because GM is an automaker and Tesla and Elon Musk, there is a bit of a dual force here where automakers may have to consider that this man not only controls the social media company they're advertising on, but also a competitor as they push into the EV space. So that is a consideration not just for GM, but Ford as well, which has said via a spokesperson, it is not currently advertising on Twitter. And of course, these two companies are important because they spend a lot of money on ads. Last year, GM spent uh, about $2.7 billion on advertising. Ford spent about $2 billion. You have the likes of Stellantis around that figure as well. So Twitter could potentially be missing out on some big dollar figures here without these guys. And if it wants to make money, it really needs ads to do that. That is what Twitter's revenue model to this point is based on. And Elon Musk claims to investors that he wants to triple that revenue within six years, that's going to be tough when the trend already was working against him. We actually saw a drop-off negative revenue growth earlier for Twitter this year. And that probably helps explain why last week he tweeted out a letter to advertisers saying in part he wanted to, quote, fundamentally mean Twitter aspire to be the most respected advertising platform in the world. We can see if he will indeed be able to turn into it, John, because Elon Musk has tended to be quite a polarizing figure. And there's a lot of question marks about what exactly he's trying to accomplish here. Hey, Kelly, thank you. Ed, final word on this one. GM says it's a normal course of business, new owner of a new platform. What's your response to it? I don't think it's the normal course of business, really, is it? I mean, Kaylee touched on the point that this is a company that has close ties to Tesla. As I've reported, there are Tesla engineers inside Twitter's HQ right now assessing the code, assessing um, and, and basically vetting Twitter's software staff. So, you know, it's an interesting one. One quick point on the CEO title, John. Remember last year, Musk said that as Tesla, CEO was a made-up title and that actually he was techno king. If you go to Tesla's IR website, site, it clearly lists Musk as CEO and gives all of the other titles that he officially holds. It does not list on Tesla's IR site, Chief Twit.